Okay, so this is another topic from MSc Microbiology Practical Series that is microbial degradation of pesticides. Okay, so welcome to Microbial Concepts and let's start with this topic. So first is what are pests? So pests are living organisms that occur where they are not wanted or they cause damage to the crops or humans or other animals. Okay, so unwanted insects are what we call them as pest. So a pest or a pesticide, sorry, is a term of any substance or mixture of substances intended for preventing, destroying or repelling or mitigating any pest. Okay, so to kill them or to um, destroy them, we apply certain chemicals or certain substances that is what we know or we term them as pesticides. So there are different types of pesticides. So insecticide is um, a substance that acts against some insects is known as insecticides. Herbicides, so a compound or a substance that acts against some unwanted plants is known as herbicides. Rodenticides, which acts against rodents, that is rats and mice. Then bactericides are one that or the compound or substance that acts against bacteria, fungicides which acts against fungi and larvicides is the compound that acts against the larval stage of any pest or insect. Okay. So pesticidal compounds are being increasingly, increasingly used in the control of pest of related to humans, animals or plants. Okay. And they are synthetic, they are chemically derived, so they are harmful. Okay, so pesticides they come under the broad range of chemical types such as chlorinated hydrocarbons, then organic phosphorus compounds, carbonates, organic sulfur compounds, halogenated or nitro aromatic or aliphatic substances, and a number of inorganic substances. Okay, so there is a broad range of chemical types which are used in the making of pesticides okay and they are very very harmful the degradation of pesticide in the soil now that is what we are uh, studying here as microbes are present in the soils and these pesticides for example say you are considering a agricultural field and there some herbicide or some insecticide or bactericide or fungicide is applied then who are going to degrade that so the microbes which are present in soil they are the ones which will be uh, helping in degradation of these pesticides. Okay, so now this degradation, it depends upon the solubility and the presence of certain linkage in the molecule of pesticide and which are easily vulnerable to the action of chemicals. Okay, or the enzymes which are produced by the um, microbes. Okay, so the degradation of pesticide in soil depends on all these factors. Beside these factors inherent in the chemical constitution of pesticide molecule, soil factors such as optimum temperature, moisture, organic residue, they provide the environment for the breakdown and the retention of these pesticides. Okay, so these are the different factors depending on which the degradation of pesticide will uh, or the rate of degradation will increase or decrease. Okay. Now, as we are studying this in our practicals in microbiology, you should remember some of the examples. So here is a chart where insecticide example, for example, DDT is the insecticide that is used. So there are some microbes which are known to degrade this. For example, Bacillus, Pseudomonas and Escherichia. Then alderine is another insecticide which is known to be degraded by fusarium, penicillium and pseudomonas. Okay, so likewise at least try to remember two examples from insecticides, two from herbicides and two from fungicides. Okay, and different microbes which degrade them. Now moving towards the practical. So what all you require? So you require a soil sample, preferably the same pesticide which is applied. Okay, so now here you need a commercially available pesticide or the, the, or the bottle or the packet which is applied in the field. Okay, so you need that pesticide, concentrated form of pesticide and the soil where it was applied. Okay, then minimal media tubes containing one gram of glucose, 
0.1% glucose, minimal media tubes containing 0.5%, 0.3%, 0.1% glucose, and 0.1.5 and 1% of pesticide. So now this is to be made in combination with increasing concentration of pesticide and decreasing concentration of glucose. Okay. Then minimal media plates containing respective concentration of glucose and pesticide. So this is the broth culture uh, media and this is the solid culture media. Okay. And then the pesticide that you are going to use. So you need to uh, note down the trade name, the pesticide type, class of that particular pesticide and use. It is used against uh, insects or fungi or bacteria or bacteria etc. And the mode of action. Okay, so now the pesticide also has mode of action against say it is a fung fungicide, then it has the mode of action against fungi. So you should know that. Okay, so now uh, during my college time, we used malathion as the pesticide, one of the pesticides for our practicals. So it depends on uh, you your college or your professor which pesticide they are preferring or which is easily available for them to use in the practical so that depends okay so i'm not uh, giving any particular name here so just to uh, memorize you can say malathion or ddt or the other examples which i showed you or i showed in the previous slide okay then what is the method or the procedure? So you need minimal media. So why we need minimal media? We don't want the um, higher nutrient rich media here because we want to isolate or screen for the bacteria which are able to degrade pesticide. Okay, so it should um, whole and soul it should grow on your high concentrations of pesticide. So minimal media is one which we use here because it should just support the growth of bacteria with the lowest uh, glucose concentration and then the bacteria should be able to grow depending on the pesticide okay so minimal media tubes containing one percent of glucose is inoculated with one gram of soil so here there is no pesticide in this first tube there is just one percent glucose so now we are enriching the sample okay all the bacteria which are present in the uh, soil they will grow in the first tube of 1% glucose in the minimal media tube now you incubate this tube at 30 degrees celsius for 24 hours you will observe growth that is for sure now minimal media tube containing 0.5% of glucose concentration and 0.1% of pesticide was inoculated by the supernatant from the first tube okay so here there is 0.1% of pesticide present okay now what will happen you will incubate this tube and again you will um, observe for the growth now growth was confirmed now if you find turbidity in this tube then it means that some of the bacteria are able to grow in the presence of 0.1% of pesticide okay so now you confirm the growth of bacteria by streaking the sample from above tube on the media containing the same composition of glucose and pesticide. Again, in the third tube, you will inoculate with the, uh, by, by using the supernatant of the second tube, you will inoculate and you will, here you will increase the concentration of pesticide. Okay, so there is a, a kind of say serial passage you are doing so that the concentration of pesticide is increasing where in your tubes where concentration of pesticide is increasing and concentration of glucose is decreasing so what you are doing you are doing what you are trying to uh, grow the isolate which is able to degrade the pesticide in the highest concentration of pesticide okay where glucose is very very low just to support its growth okay so you do that you do uh, serial passage or you say you can say serially you are inoculating the tubes of minimal media where glucose concentration is decreasing and the pesticide concentration is increasing okay now every time the growth was confirmed by streaking the sample from the above tube uh, on the media plate containing the same composition as the broth okay and then at the last 
from the last tube you characterize the colony okay or try to identify now this is the simple flow chart so you can see here in the first tube where no pesticide is present you inoculate 1 gram of soil sample in minimal media containing 1% of glucose now all the bacteria or the fungi will grow from the soil in this media and you incubate this then what you do you transfer or you inoculate the supernatant from this particular tube to the second tube where glucose is 0.5% and pesticide is 0.1% okay now again you inoculate and you incubate this tube after incubation growth of growth was observed and it was confirmed by streaking on minimal media plate with same composition okay as of this now you use this particular tube you take the supernatant and you inoculate the third tube where glucose is 0.3% and pesticide is 0.5%. Again, you incubate this tube and you wait and observe for the growth and you confirm the growth by streaking on minimal media plate with same composition. Then you use the supernatant from this tube to inoculate the fourth tube where concentration of glucose is very low that is 0.1% and pesticide concentration is 1%. Okay, so you uh, incubate after inoculation and you wait for um, turbidity. You should observe the growth and you confirm that by streaking on minimal media plate with same composition. Okay, so this is how you try to enrich your sample and you try to isolate the um, bacterial or uh, fungal cultures which are able to degrade your pesticide okay which are able to grow in the presence of high concentration of pesticide okay so the concentration of glucose decreases while the concentration of pesticide increases as you move further so by this way we are ensuring that only microbes that are able to grow by degrading pesticides are only getting isolated okay now about mechanism so the bacterial degradation of pesticides is fundamentally based on two processes that is first they will grow on that particular pesticide and then they will co-metabolize okay that means they will use it as a source of carbon or they will just try to uh, use it in their metabolism and breakdown then organic pollutants are consumed as a source of carbon and energy for bacterial growth and metabolism and thereby facilitating conversion or mineralization of organic pollutants so here organic pollutants are what pesticides degradation ability of the soil bacteria depends on various physical chemical parameters such as temperature environmental ph water water holding potential of soil available nutrients soil texture and porosity so depending on all these factors or all these parameters uh in in case of actual scenario in the agricultural field or in the soil the degradation is facilitated by these parameters okay so many chemical pesticides uh, they are as we can say analogs to the natural compounds so some organisms they have enzymes to degrade them okay analogs means they have similar structure to some other natural compounds okay and that's the reason why uh, microorganisms they produce some enzymes that can easily degrade them now detoxification through metabolism by broad spectrum enzymes by bacteria is more uh, commonly metabolizing them okay so the enzyme system broad spectrum enzyme system of microbes is the main reason to detoxify these pollutants which are the pesticides they could be the source they could be used as source of microbial nutrients and then can be degraded into inorganic matter or carbon dioxide and water by microbes okay so that's the mechanism now i found a very good research article on research gate which is named as microbial remediation of persistent agrochemicals by soil bacteria and overview okay so this is an overview so there are too many points which are considered and a very good article to read and know more about this particular topic okay so i think uh, if you have this for your practicals and if you want more background knowledge regarding this topic then you can 
or you should visit uh, to research get website and find this particular article and read it okay so now some viva questions so what are pesticides types of pesticides name some microbes that have capacity to degrade pesticide with examples mechanisms of microbial degradation of pesticide then which pesticide was used for your practical so here you need to remember the trade name the uh, name of your pesticide and the class of your pesticide okay then why use increasing concentration of pesticide in minimal media for isolation because we need to isolate the uh, microbial culture which is able to grow in high concentration of pesticide okay so that is the reason we are screening and that is how we will um, come to know that yes this particular microbe is able to degrade it okay as using it as a carbon source and energy source and um, through co-metabolism it can detoxify okay then what is the difference between pesticide and biopesticide then name the factors on which degradation of pesticide depends on okay so these are some possible questions which i can think of then do watch my other videos from msc microbiology practical series that is isolation of uh, phosphate solubilizing microbes isolation of fungi actinomycetes yeast then isolation of cyanobacteria isolation of mesophiles thermophiles etc with viva questions okay so all these videos are uploaded on my channel so i hope this video is also helpful to you all do like my videos do comment and do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel thank you